Hello friends, this video on Atoms part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 9 before going ahead with part 10. So let us now talk about the line spectra of hydrogen which gave rise to the Bohr's model of hydrogen atom. Now when I talk about line spectra of hydrogen, what do I mean? So how, how and when do we obtain a line spectra of hydrogen? As I mentioned before also, when do we get the atomic spectra? When we supply some external energy, right? And make the atom excited, correct? So in this case, how do we supply that external energy? When an electric discharge is passed through gaseous hydrogen. So that means this electric discharge acts as the external energy, right? So when you pass this electric discharge through gaseous hydrogen, the hydrogen molecules dissociate and energetically excited hydrogen atoms produce emitted, emit electromagnetic radiation of discrete frequencies. So this is the basic funda of uh, uh, emission spectra. Emission spectra will be obtained only when you supply some external energy. Whenever external energy is supplied, the atoms will go to the excited state once the atoms go to the excited state, they emit electromagnetic radiation, right? And this radiation of which are emitted are of discrete frequencies. So these radiation together form the line spectra or the emission line spectra. So in case of hydrogen also similarly we get with the help of the electric discharge, we get the line spectra. The line spectra looks somewhat like this. So the, these are the different series of lines which are seen in the spectrum of hydrogen. The hydrogen spectrum consists of several series of lines named after their discoverers. Now, in due course of time, different scientists came up and they studied the line spectra of hydrogen and they, they keep discovering new series of lines. So that lines which they discovered were named after them and that is how uh, each set of lines was given a specific name in the hydrogen spectrum. So we will discuss this, those sets of lines. So the first one which we will discuss is the Balmer series. Balmer was the first scientist who was able to discover the series of lines in the spectra of hydrogen. In 1885, on the basis of experimental observations, he found that if spectral lines are expressed in terms of wavelength, then the visible lines of the hydrogen spectrum obey the following formula. So the Balmer was the scientist who was able to observe the visible lines of the hydrogen spectrum. And these visible lines of hydrogen spectrum was named as Balmer series. So what did he say? He, says, he told that the wavelength associated with these spectral lines will, for, will obey this formula. What is R? R is nothing but a Rydberg's constant whose value is given as 109677 cm inverse. So he told that the wavelength of these particular series of lines should satisfy this equation that is 1 by lambda is equal to r into 1 by n square minus 1 by 2 square. So from where did he get this expression? Basically what he tried to say was that the wavelength of these series should satisfy this equation where what was n1? n1 was the energy level from where so from where it jumped and n2 was the energy level to where it jumped it would be somewhat like this let us suppose this is ground state corresponding to n equal to 1 this is n is equal to 2 this is n is equal to 3 and so on. Now when we talk about when this uh, Balmer when he found out this visible range of radiations he found that these radiations were the one where the atoms got excited to higher energy levels that means 2n is equal to 3n is equal to 4, 5 and so on and then they gave out this radiation that means when the atoms jumped from higher energy levels to this level n is equal to 2 then Balmer series was obtained. So that means Balmer series were obtained when excited atoms from higher energy levels fall back. So in case of Balmer series what is n1? n1 is the energy level 
from where it falls down. As I mentioned, how the emission spectra is formed when the atoms are excited to higher energy levels. That means this is your ground level, this is your n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, and I mean I'm not giving space here, let me draw it here. This is n is equal to 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5 and so on. So let us suppose the atoms got excited to these higher energy levels, right? So when these atoms, these excited atoms radiate energy, that is when they fall back to this energy level 2, then Balmer series is obtained. And this series is the only series which in the entire hydrogen atomic spectra which is visible. Right? So in this formula, what will be N1? N1 means from where it is coming. So it is coming from some higher energy level, right? So N1 can be anything. It can be 3, 4, 5 or anything. And N2 will be 2. So if you put these values, you will get R is equal to 1 by N square minus 1 by 2 square. Where N can be any value beyond 2. That is 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Right? So this is how the wavelength of the Balmer series was determined. Now how this formula was derived was uh, something depending on the experimental study. I mean this formula was derived by Balmer depending upon his experimental observations. I mean it is like he maybe he, he observed several things and depending on that he derived this formula. So the series of lines described by this formula are called the Balmer series. The Balmer series of lines are the only lines in the hydrogen spectrum which appear in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Right? So this was the contribution of the scientist named Balmer because he was the first one to um, observe and to study and experimentally gave this formula for the uh, atomic spectra of hydrogen. Now following him there came up many different scientists who, who defined the other lines of the hydrogen spectrum which were however not in the visible region but in, in some other region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now what is this constant R? Let us talk about it. There was another scientist named Johannes Rydberg who noted that all series of lines in the hydrogen spectrum could be described by the following expression, the expression which I talked about in the previous slide, this expression, right, where N1 is the energy level where the atom fall back. If you look at and N2 is the energy level from where the atom fall back. For example, in case of Balmer series, N1 would always remain 2 and N2 will keep changing. N2 can be 3, N2 can be 4. So depending upon the value of N2, the wavelength of the radiation will change. Right? Because if it is getting uh, radiated from N is equal to 5 to N is equal to 2, the wavelength of the radiation which is emitted will be different than the wavelength which is emitted when it de-excite from n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 2, right? So depending upon the value of the energy level from where it is getting de-excited, the wavelength of the radiation which is emitted will vary, right? Okay. The value, therefore this, this constant R was named after this scientist river and its value was 109677 centimeter inverse and it was considered to be constant for hydrogen. The first five series of lines that correspond to n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are known as Lyman, Balmer, Pashkin, Brackett and P fund. These are the different series of lines of the hydrogen spectrum. In the previous slide we spoke only about Balmer. So Balmer was the one which corresponds to N1 is equal to 2. That means all the uh, atoms from higher energy level will fall back to N is equal to 2. Now in case of Lyman, similarly in case of Lyman everything remains the same just that in this case N1 is equal to 1. For Pashkin N1 is equal to 3. For Bracket N1 is equal to 4. And for P Fund N1 is equal to 5. So these are the different series of lines which together define the atomic spectra of hydrogen. Please note that the formula is derived empirically using the experimental data available at that time as I mentioned in the previous slide. So let us again have a look at the Balmer series of hydrogen. Let us look at the values which determine the range of the Balmer series of hydrogen atom.
Now, in the Bamar series, as I mentioned, since the rays, and as I mentioned before also, so these are your different energy levels. Let us suppose this corresponds to n is equal to 2. So this is how the Balmer series is constituted. So that means there is a line which will have a maximum wavelength. Similarly, there would be a line which will have a minimum wavelength. So there will be a range of wavelength between which the Balmer series will lie. Right? There has to be a range of wavelength. So let us calculate that minimum range and the maximum range of wavelength for the Balmer series of hydrogen. Let us suppose, let us denote them as, let us denote each line of Balmer series as H alpha, H beta, H gamma and so on. Right? So let us suppose that H alpha is the line which corresponds to longest wavelength. So now, how do I calculate this lambda? That is the lambda max. So we will use the formula 1 by lambda is equal to Rydberg's constant into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. Since we are talking about Balmer series, n1 will always be equal to 2. What will be n2? n2 will be equal to 3. So when it jumps from the nearest level, the wavelength would be the maximum, right? Because if you see here, now, as the value of N2 increases, your N1 is always constant. So, if the value of N2 is increasing, that means the value of 1 by N2 square is decreasing, right? So, that means a smaller value is getting subtracted from this. So, if a smaller value is getting subtracted from this, that means as a whole, this entire value is increasing. Therefore, your lambda is increasing. So, lambda will increase as N2 will decrease. So the maximum wavelength will be when the value of N2 is minimum. So what is the minimum possible value of N2? Minimum possible value is 3. Right? So in this case, what would be 1 by lambda max? This will be equal to R into 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9. So this Rydberg's constant, we know the value of Rydberg's constant is 1, 1, 0, 1, 9. 637 in centimeter inverse. So putting this value, we find that this lambda max comes out to be 656.3 nanometers. So this is the maximum wavelength of the Balmer series. Now let us calculate the minimum wavelength for the Balmer series. So how do you calculate the minimum wavelength for the Balmer series? Now for the minimum lambda, when will be the lambda minimum? Lambda will be minimum when this de-excitation takes place from a very high energy level. That means in that case, N1 will again remain as 2 and N2 will be infinity. Right? So therefore, in this case, 1 by lambda minimum will be equal to R into 1 by 4. So R by 4 would denote the minimum value of lambda, not r by 4, lambda minimum would be equal to 4 by r. Right? So that means the Balmer series lies between these two values of lambda maximum and lambda minimum. So this region or the lines of the Balmer series are contained between these two values of wavelengths. Right? So any wavelength which, which is greater than this will not fall under Balmer series. Similarly, any wavelength of a spectral line which is lesser than this lambda minimum will not fall under Balmer series. So here I have shown you that how the wavelength of the radiation or how the wavelength of a spectral line changes as the radiation takes place from a higher energy level. Now, what happens beyond these two lambda minimum and lambda maximum? The continuous spectra exist, right? So, this discrete spectra exists only between these two values of lambda. Now, let us quickly look at the other series in the hydrogen atomic spectra. So, here in this diagram, all the series are shown. If you look here, this is the Lyman series where n is equal to 1. That means uh, the, <coughs> the radiation is taking place from higher energy levels to n is equal to 1. This is the Balmer series where n is equal to 2. 
this is Pashkin is equal to 3, similarly bracket and P5, which is not drawn, but which is not shown here. So what will happen for these different series? When I talk about Lyman, what my N1 is equal to 1. If, if you look at the Ritbull's formula, it is 1 by lambda into R, 1 by N1 squared minus 1 by N2 squared. Right? So now if I apply it to Lyman series, so what would be the wavelength corresponding to the lines of Lyman series? It would be 1 by lambda r into 1 by 1 square minus 1 by n2 square, where n2 is equal to 2, 3, 4 and so on. Now, a Lyman spec series is visible in the ultraviolet region. Next is the Balmer series which we have discussed in detail. So in the in case of Balmer, it would be 1 by lambda r into 1 by 2 square minus n, 1 by n2 square. So in this case n2 is 3, 4, 5 and it is in the visible region. Then comes Pashkin. For Pashkin, it would be 1 by lambda into r into 1 by n1 square. For Pashkin, n1 would be equal to 3. So this would be 9 minus 1 by n2 square. So n2 would be 4, 5, 6 and above. And this is visible in the infrared region. Next is bracket which will be given by 1 by lambda into r into 1 by 16 minus 1 by n2 square and similarly we will have p5. Now please note that each of these names are after their discoverers. So this would be 1 by lambda r into 1 by 25 minus 1 by n2 square. So this is how we determine the wavelength associated with each spectral line of the hydrogen atomic spectra. So let us have a view of the line spectra of hydrogen. So this was the view of the spectral lines. If you look at it, L denotes the line in B, Balmer, P, Pashkin, B, R, bracket, P, F, P, fund. Right? Now, this is another view which tells us in the form of the energy levels. So, this is the view of the energy level diagram. And what is this? This is the view of the orbitals. So, this is your n is equal to 1. That is the ground state. This is your nucleus. So, these are the different electron orbits. Right? So, when from higher orbits, Radiation falls on n is equal to 1, it is Lyman series. When it falls to n is equal to 2, it is Balmer, Pashkin, Bracket and P1. So this is how you can visualize it in the uh, atomic structure. Right? <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.